Welcome back guys, this is CIT124, Introduction to Information Security. Uh, we covered our lecture till the point where we were discussing uh, about different malwares and uh, what could be the different payload capabilities of it. Uh, now we'll talk about a little bit about zombies. Um, now one of the most common payload of a malware today is a software that will allow the infected computer to be placed under a remote control of an attacker. This infector uh, robot computer is usually known as a zombie. Uh, when hundreds and thousands and even hundreds and thousands of zombies computers are gathered into a logical network, uh, they create a huge network, we call them a botnet, and uh, they are usually under the control of an attacker who, um, who is uh, a bot herder. Uh, now what they do is a common uh, botnet uh, technique is that they are using HTTP protocol which is a normal protocol for web communication, uh, standard protocol for inter usage, thus making it difficult to detect the block. For example, zombie can receive instructions by automatically signing into a website uh, that is controlled by a bot herder, uh, and then it operates uh, it or uses a third party website and uh, it gets the information and places zombie known to interpret the commands and uh, pass the instructions to the computers. Uh, now they affect the computers or the polling or different kind of uh, gaming mechanism and stuff uh, in various different ways. It really depends uh, that what's the target of these kind of botnet attacks, uh, but they are usually focused uh, towards uh, changing the things. Now you can see that they can even send lots of spam um, uh, since they are operated by uh, a person who is controlling them remotely. Yeah, they can spread lots of uh, malwares on the network. They can manipulate the games and their uh, statistics, even the on online polling and stuff. It would be considered as uh, someone has physically casted a vote over there. It can even deny the requests on the server when they would be flooded with lots of requests which would be coming. And um, the server will not be able to respond that which request is legitimate and which request is a fake request. Now in order to understand what defenses can you take against these kind of malwares or the new techniques which are coming in the market in order to affect your network, um, you should uh, apply the patches which are released by the operating system uh, on regular basis. Like Windows 10 is constantly releasing the uh, patches if they find a vulnerability in their operating system and they think that this can be exploited by any kind of um, hackers or people who are trying to penetrate in the network they immediately release a patch for that. Now that patch would uh, protect you the basic line of uh, uh, protection would be there um, and then if uh, it's applied on the computer, there are very less chances that your computer will be compromised. That's why it's our responsibility to keep an eye on the regular updates which are uh, released by Microsoft or any other operating system that you're using. Now, there are certain force updates that you are supposed to apply them anyway, and uh, some are selective updates. Selective updates are the one which you can choose. They are not critical. Uh, Microsoft is categorizing them as critical and non-critical, so you can choose which one is required and which one is not required uh, for those kind of things. Uh, now, the best way to do is uh, uh, to distribute it efficiently on the network. If you are in your organization and you are using a Windows Service Update server, it would keep on finding the computers which don't have the um, updated patches and it would keep on applying the patches on the computers. Uh, now on the network, we can define a policy whether we want an automatic restart to those computers or not, but it would ask the person that uh, a restart would be required, would you like to restart it now? So in that case, we can control, um, uh, in case we are working on something important, uh, it would ask us before restarting the updates. And then uh, since if we are using Windows Service Update Packs, in case if a patch has been applied and it is creating some conflicts with any applications on the network, um, you can always pull back the, uh, the patches which were applied on the computers. Um, then we must configure the firewalls um, in a proper way that we must allow only the traffic, traffic which is known or which is approved by our firewall. 
um, installing an anti-malware solution. Now that comes in with an antivirus solution these days. If you are using a antivirus suite, it's coming with anti-spamware, uh, mostly with a firewall and an antivirus solution. Now those kind of antivirus solutions are usually controlled uh, uh, by the organization and they are setting up the policy so you won't be able to uninstall the antivirus or um, you won't be able to make any changes to it. Uh, since that antivirus is connected to the um, uh, main vendor and it keeps on getting the definitions on uh, hourly basis or daily basis depending what kind of uh, policies do you have but usually it's updated after every 10 to 15 minutes. Now you can even monitor the user, um, user access control that's a advanced uh, or an additional facility in Windows 10 uh, that if you want to install anything on the computer it would uh, pop up the window uh, so that you can read the instructions that whatever you are going to install um, whether it is uh, um, a healthy application or not for your computer. Uh, then always maintain backups for your computer so that if anything goes wrong we can format the computer anything but the data is the most important thing which you must keep an eye on. So if the data is backed up properly somewhere, um, it would take um, hardly 15 to 20 minutes. They can deploy a new image to the computer or a, um, a completely new installation on, of Windows on the machine. And then you can roll the backup or you can restore the backup on the computer so that your files and everything is back. Uh, now, you must also know how to recover for, from an attack. Some basic kind of knowledge must be there with the users. Um, uh, that's what we have been talking about uh, throughout this course, that information security is everyone's responsibility. Uh, so you must be aware of that, uh, um, what kind of procedures you must be taking in order to uh, safeguard your own computer and eventually the organization. Now let's explain these things a bit more in detail in the next slides. First of all, again, a patch is software security update intended to repair any vulnerabilities in the operating system or enhance features uh, um, um, for Windows 10. Like Windows 10 is constantly releasing uh, patches with the uh, feature update as well as security updates. And then there are some service packs that include the cumulative uh, package uh, for pa uh, for different patches and feature updates uh, which are required for Windows. Modern operating system can perform automatic updates um, which are critical but non-critical patches will not be applied automatically. That's your responsibility to check it and update. Now non-critical patches could be the patches for um, your Microsoft Office or any other Microsoft Suite applications which are installed on the computer or uh, Windows 10 is very smart in detecting any update uh, for the drivers uh, if there are any available for the peripherals which are connected to the computer. Um, so if it would detect it that if you're using an older version of a driver which is installed on your computer it would show you recommendations as an optional update where you can decide and uh, apply the patches if it is related to the uh, peripherals or the components which are installed on your computer. Uh, now Windows 10 uh, security update options are force update, no selective updates where user cannot select individual updates. Uh, they are there, you'll have to install it. Continual updates are distributed whenever they are available. Um, uh, they are usually uh, pushed out related to the geographical regions and then they are applied to the computers evenly. Now choose when to reboot the computer. You can schedule a time, for example, late night or when you're not using the computer and then up to date resets are there. Here you can choose when to update and you can defer certain updates as well. That's a typical screen for Windows 10 update options. Now uh, for the firewalls and uh, software based firewalls are there and then there are some hardware based firewalls. Now software based firewalls are the ones uh, which you install on the computer as a software just like any other application that you install on the computer. Now there is a corporate level firewall which is a um, appliance based hardware um, um, hardware device in which there is a software installed which which sits in between the external traffic and inside network and it filters the traffic which is coming from outside. Um, we have discussed it already about the demilitarized zone and militarized zone. Um, so the traffic which is behind or within the organization is a militarized zone where we know that what kind of traffic is coming from outside. 
Now, software-based firewalls are there on individual computers, which you can install it or you can enable it on Windows. Um, or if you don't want to use uh, the Windows-based uh, firewall, most of the antivirus solution softwares are coming in um, with different firewall solutions. So if you are in an organization and they are using an antivirus solution which is coming equipped with a firewall, um, you don't need to enable a firewall on your computer. Uh, most of the cases in the organizations, user, users don't have access to the admin privileges. Uh, so whatever settings are being enforced by the IT department would be enforced on the computers. Now, those kind of firewalls, they are designed to prevent any malware from entering the computer. It can examine the data which is coming in or any traffic which is going outside your computer. And then it would block all the open ports which are not required uh, um, on this uh, on this computer now we are talking very deep about network penetration and testing in another course which you can find on our um, on our YouTube channel uh, talking about network security and penetration testing so if you're interested you can follow that in order to know about more of uh, open ports and uh, how the penetration takes place on these uh, computers now configuration uh, user can grant or deny different permissions which are there as you can see, this is a typical Windows uh, firewall settings and uh, you can see you can enable it and disable it uh, depending on your scenarios on the private network or on the guest network. Now, how hardware based uh, firewalls are designed to protect the entire network of an organization, usually located at the edge of the network, as I told you, like it's between the demilitarized zone and a militarized zone. Um, it runs on a single computer, for example, a personal firewall, whereas a network firewall um, is located uh, on the network. And a scope of protection for a personal firewall, it protects only the computer, whereas network firewall would uh, protect all the devices which are in an organization. Uh, software firewall for a personal use uh, that runs on a computer, whereas a separate hardware device is there for a network firewall. Um, filtering based on the programs running on the computer, whereas on the network firewall, it provides a sophisticated range of filtering mechanisms for different ports, softwares, applications, who will be able to access at what time, from which IP address, MAC address filtering, traffic coming from where, going to, all those different kind of detailed features are there in a network firewall, which you won't find in a personal firewall. Now installing an anti-malware software like an antivirus it scans the computer hard hardware for any kind of infections and it can even monitor the computer activity and it won't even uh, let you install any software which is not digitally signed. It means that if the uh, digital signature of the software has been modified, it would notify you that it's not a legitimate software and you must not be installing it on your computer. Uh, so um, the warnings and the messages would be coming on the screen. It would be your responsibility to make sure um, that you are reading whatever is uh, uh, written on the screen. Now, viruses uh, are only one type of uh, an attack. It could be in the form of worms, uh, trojans, uh, spyware, ransomware, and other different malwares which we covered earlier in this chapter. Now, that's a Windows Defender which provides you a base level protection. We can call it that it's an antivirus solution. Uh, it depends if you are comfortable using the antivirus or the Windows Defender, which is uh, provided with uh, Microsoft Windows. You can do it. If not, there are lots of open source antivirus, uh, open source or free antivirus solutions available out there, which would provide you a basic level of protection. Uh, but uh, since uh, nowadays antivirus solution companies are desperately running uh, towards providing you a suite of applications which comes in with antivirus, uh, firewall, anti-spamware and all those things bundled together. And they are even covering nowadays under a single license your mobile device, uh, uh, your laptop and desktop computer. So lots of different solutions are available out there depending um, upon uh, what kind of preferences do you have um, when you're choosing an antivirus solution for an indiv individual computer. Uh, the thing which plays an important role in choosing an antivirus solution is, which personally I look for, is that it must not be consuming a lot of resources on the PC. Because if the antivirus is scanning your computer on a regular basis, 
and it's consuming way too much resources, it would affect your overall performance of uh, uh, the computer. Anti uh, spyware helps prevent the computer from being infected by different types of spywares which are coming from the internet. Sometimes they come through the emails, but mostly they are coming through the web pages or the applications that you are using on the computer. A pop up blocker is an example, it allows the user to limit the and block most of the pop ups which are coming up, mostly because of the advertisements that we have on different websites. Now, user access control indicates the privilege level of a user which uh, files and folders must be accessed, what should be installed, configuration changes on the computer and stuff. Um, it has been introduced since Windows 7 and it's coming um, on the computers. It's uh, better to keep it enabled uh, if uh, on, you can only disable it if you are an advanced user, but it helps you in um, telling or uh, notifying you that whether you must be allowing certain access to the computer or not. There are three different types of user accounts like guest accounts, standard accounts, and administrator accounts. Um, if you don't know much about the computers, uh, keep it on the guest mode. Otherwise, you can keep it on standard. And if you are very good on using the computers um, and you can taste the, uh, take the risk, then allow the highest level of computer where um, it would be giving you warnings according to that. Now it alerts the user on the operating system events and asks for the permission and perform different tasks. And then it uh, even helps to protect the uh, Trojans from making unauthorized changes to the computer. Uh, if you disable it completely, you won't be aware that if an application is trying um, uh, to take control over different system files on the computer. Uh, so users with the administrator account can authorize the changes uh, and what should be done. Uh, recommended uh, notifications uh, for UAC are always notify um, uh, and it uh, give most users the standard accounts as you can see with the slider you can uh, change the level of notifications that you'll be getting whenever you are going to make any necessary changes uh, to the operating system or if you are installing an application on the computer. Now creating a backup is a very important thing which you can um, uh, which should be a scheduled task on your computer. There is a Windows backup utility which comes in pre-installed in Windows coming from Windows 7 onwards uh, where you can create Windows backup um, of the data and the operating system on your computer itself. Uh, now backup can restore the computer properly in a functional state. Um, you can define different kind of backups, complete backup or the data backup or um, different kind of things. Now the reason is that maybe there could be a virus or your computer will be affected. Maybe there will be a hardware failure or the operating system um, is corrupted or you are having any issues by using the computer or any uh, latest peripheral that you have connected to the computer. Uh, so before anything fails or the computer stops working, it's a, a good idea always to um, create the backup so that you can restore it in, in case of a natural disaster as well. Now you can uh, schedule different backups to perform intentionally by the user. Uh, strategy could be uh, what data to be backed up, uh, on which media it would be backed up. It would be backed up within the computer or an external network source or you want to save the backups on an external hard disk or uh, you are going to directly save it to a DVD. And then we can decide that how frequently we are going to take the backup. It's on daily basis, weekly basis, or monthly basis. Uh, now there are some continuous backups as well that is performed continuously without an intervention by the user. You can schedule a task and it would automatically run the task uh, um, as per the scheduled time. For example, your duty hours are, for example, from 7.30 to 4 p.m. You can schedule a backup to be um, to execute itself automatically at 5 or 6 o'clock or by midnight. So it would automatically uh, back up the computer and it would save the files uh, on the location where you want the files to be saved. Um, now, uh, most of the uh, third party softwares or the professional softwares uh, which are backing up the computers, um, uh, they have lots of options like incremental backup or full backup or 
um, uh, even the backup for the files or partitions or individual things. So um, it's always a good idea to look for uh, the professional softwares which are out there, um, uh, which are constantly taking the backup of the computers. And the excellent feature which I have seen in one of the softwares is for um, uh, applying or restoring the backup of a computer to an indifferent hardware. Like uh, it's not like if you have created a backup on one computer, it would work only on that computer specific brand. Um, they are creating the backup in a way that you can deploy the same image or the same backup to any other computer. Maybe the computer that you were using was an HP computer and it crashed. Now you have a Dell computer or you want to deploy the same image to a Dell computer. So there would be a difference in the hardware. So now these backup softwares are maintaining the backups in a way that you, um, you are not dependent on the hardware. So uh, regardless what kind of hardware is there, it is going to uh, deploy the image or restore the backup on a, in different hardware. Now there are um, inter-services, uh, um, uh, some backups uh, available, uh, which you can restore your computer or create the backups online. Um, Google Drive is there. Uh, then we are very well aware of uh, uh, lots of other well-known softwares which are out there, um, with the help of which we are creating continuous backups uh, uh, of the computers online. Uh, now optional programs are there for backup. Uh, uh, delayed deletion is there that it would keep on maintaining the backups. Uh, for example, for 90 days, anything older than 90 days would be deleted automatically. Now you can adjust this time frame that for how many backups you want to maintain or the time frame depending on the kind of business you are in. Um, most of the organizations who are uh, into marketing and stuff, they are devising the strategies based on the data which is collected from these computers that till what date you want to maintain a backup of uh, the computer. The advantages of an online continuous backup is that mm, they are performed automatically and stored at a remote location. So uh, God forbid if there are any natural disasters or anything like that, um, and if anything, everything is uh, damaged uh, in that area, even your backup would be damaged. So in order to be safer side, uh, it's always a good idea to maintain backups locally as well as at remote locations uh, from where you can uh, uh, restore the backup from the cloud easily. Now recovering from the attacks, it means that the preparation should be there um, for recovering from the attack. It could be creating the backups and then maintaining them uh, by testing different backups that you have. It could be a DVD based where it would uh, load the computer in the uh, pre-executable environment and then you can browse to the uh, backup wherever you have maintained it and restore the backup from there as they are saying create a recovery drive uh, It can help recover the windows and various vendors are providing the recovery disk which can be downloaded as the image files uh, and it would boot um, uh, by a bootable DVD uh, in its own environment where you can tell the location of the backup and it would restore it on the computer that concludes uh, this chapter about uh, the information security or the computer security. So in order to protect ourselves, follow all these steps so that um, we can recover as fast as possible in case of a special situation. That's it. Thank you very much, guys.